This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a question from a viewer um, about oysters and clams in aquaponics, so we're gonna be touching on that. I know probably a few of you out there have the same question. You wanna know, you're curious. Can I grow some oysters and clams in my aquaponics system? I see you out there, so that's what we're gonna be going into right now. So this question comes from Mike Cool Morale Leha. What's going on? So the question says, can you grow clams and oysters in aquaponics? So here's the deal. Here in the United States, there's primarily two types of, um, of clams. We'll start with clams that are raised for commercial purposes. I'm assuming that you're going to be either talking about commercial production or as the primary fish being raised in your aquaponics system. So there's pretty much two types. You have the quahog or the hard clam, and then you also have the manila, right? The manila clam. Now, both of these, they're marine species, and they're raised um, pretty much, or they can be found pretty much uh, in beaches where the salt concentration is somewhere around 35 parts per thousand. So that's one thing. Now also, clams, they're in faunal species, meaning that they live or they bury themselves in the sediment. Right, that's where they live at. They pretty much live sedentary lives. They don't really move around a lot. And that's the environment that they comfortably dwell in. Now, when we're talking about aquaponics, off the top, I can see two, pretty much two uh, issues that could uh, be problematic when you're trying to raise clams in an aquaponic system. One, like I said, they're marine species, so the salinity when you want to raise um, uh, clams, it's going to be from anywhere from 20 parts per thousand upwards to 40 parts per thousand from the literature that I read. Now, that is way too high of a salt concentration for the plants that we grow, the traditional plants that we grow in aquaponics. You know, your lettuce, your uh, spinach, tomatoes, you know, any of the, the plants that you can uh, think of. That's going to be way too high of a salt concentration. We're talking about seawater versus fresh water. What we're dealing with is fresh water, um, a, a fresh water system. And this is what these plants can, can grow in. So the salt concentration is way too high. So that's gonna be the biggest setback when you're trying to grow these clams. Now, other than that, they also, like I said, they require sediment. They bury themselves in the sediment and that's where they live. You really don't wanna be adding sediment or any type of uh, substrate to an aquaponic system because it's gonna reduce the cleaning capability of your system. Like if I were to add in this tank here, in the fish tank, let me move it over here. If I were to add in any one of these fish tanks, if I were to add substrate in there, it's pretty much going to reduce the uh, effectiveness of the tank when it comes to cleaning, removing the solids out. And that could, from, and that's a recipe for a disaster. From there, you can start developing anaerobic areas, you know, and then, um, uh, different other problems can start coming from there. Anaerobic areas start producing hydrogen sulfide, you know, and other toxic compounds as well. So it's probably not the best thing to do to add substrate in there with, um, with, with clams. So you got two pretty much problems on your hand. Like I said, the salt concentration, that's automatically a cutoff there. And then also you have the substrate. Right now, when we're dealing with oysters, oysters, they have been raised in a recirculating system before. Um, I was reading literature by the associate professor from uh, Virginia Tech. His name is David, Dr. David Duns. And he did an experimentation in uh, 2013 where he ran trials for a few weeks on uh, raising oysters in a recirculating system. Now oysters also, for the, mo uh, the most part, those are going to be saltwater uh, um, species as well. So you're going to run into the same problem. The salt concentration required is going to be too high. What they did in their recirculating system is they um, pretty much used synthetically manufactured um, salt water, using well water and mixing it with salt and creating that type of salt water environment for the oyster to, um, to thrive. Now, what he did say is that there was really good survival rates in a recirculating system because aquaponics, this is a recirculating closed loop system. He said there was good um, survival rates up to 99% survival rates. 
And also the growth rates were comparable as well, growing it in a recirculating system. But what he concluded is that, you know, there still need to be more research done because, you know, growing oysters in a tight, you know, a confined high stock, uh, stocking density, it creates, you know, a higher concentration of organic material. And what he said was that um, there still needs to be more research to find out if these things are going to be, you know, uh, healthy and suitable for human consumption, especially if they're eaten raw or unprocessed. Also, the feeding um, uh, uh, feeding um, type that needs to be put in there needs to be tested out more. He said there needs to be more tests uh, over a longer range of time to see, you know, how they do over a longer period of time, especially with the health concerns with eating those um, oysters raised in that type of environment. So it's still a little wishy-washy in that respect as well. But once again, like I said, the salt water is going to be the main uh, prohibiting factor. Now there are freshwater oysters, but from what I read is those don't really have the taste. They don't really have that nah. They're missing that, that nah, that it factor. So I don't eat oysters, so I wouldn't know, but from what I read, it just doesn't really have the, the taste that that salt water oyster has, right? So see, so, so these are two, uh, some of the type of things that you have to consider trying to drop salt water uh, fish in a, an aquaponic system doesn't really seem like it's the best fit what what um, what I always suggest or what I recommend is that we stick to the fin fish those are gonna be your best um, your best options your tilapia you know your yellow perch um, you know things like catfish you know bluegill things of that nature fin fish those are gonna be your best option other than trying to deal with you know oysters and clams and other types of mussels alright so let's see what else you got on here And would they filter solids? So in regards to the clams, they do filter solids. These are filter feeders, what is known as filter feeders. Now, like I said, they are in faunal species. They bury themselves in the sediment. And what they do is, in order to feed, they kind of extend their neck or their, a, a siphon out through the sediment. And from there, they suck in water. Uh, they take in oxygen and, they, and they, uh, they take in food. As they respire, they get rid of the water and they trap in the food particles, right? And some of the food particles that they take in, mostly in a natural environment, is going to be things like phytoplankton, which are uh, free-floating uh, plants. They also take in, uh, you know, dead particles from, or particles from dead animals, waste from, uh, animal, uh, uh, from animals, you know, particle waste, even toxic uh, 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 compounds they take in as well. So they're taking in uh, all types of things. They're indiscriminate feeders. So yes, they can do some filtering. But like I said, once again, when you have to add the sediment in your system uh, to provide uh, uh, um, an environment for them, that's going to be more counterproductive than it is uh, going to be productive. Right? So I presume that they would be uh, more problematic than helpful, which is why you don't see any you know, serious producers using these type of, um, of, of organisms as a, a primary filter. Maybe if you use freshwater clams, you might be able to figure out some type of way uh, to, to, to squeeze them in there. But as a primary filter, you're going to want to need something that's an uh, external filter that's pr uh, not a living organism because these guys, they produce their own waste as well. So you, eventually you're going to need something that's going to remove the waste totally out of the system. Right? So you're gonna, always going to need you know, in this, in this unnatural environment, when you have things that are um, raised in a high density that you won't find in nature, you can't rely pretty much on natural ways to deal with unnatural environments. So we're going to have to introduce, you know, your bead filters and your swirl filters and things like that. Your uh, drum filters to remove that solid waste out eventually. You know, it's not, there's no, really no way around that. Right. And this at this particular time, at least there's no way around that. Right. So we want to keep that in mind. So that's what I would say as far as that. Let's see what else you got. Also, can you get pearls from aquaponics grown oysters? Now, when we're dealing with pearls, those can be found in a few different organisms. They can be found in clams. Uh, other mussels, but they're primarily found in uh, oysters. Now, oysters, they have an organ 
called the mantle, which is responsible for creating the shell. Now, the mantle uses the nutrients that are taken from the food to produce a substance called nacre. The nacre is what is used to line the shell, the inside of the shell, and allow it to grow. Now, the way you get a pearl that forms is a foreign object or uh, some type of foreign material, usually like a, a grain of sand or um, a, a bacteria or a parasite, slips in between the shell and the mantle. Right, it slips in between there. And then what the, um, the oyster feels is it feels an irritation, somewhat similar to like if you get um, a, a piece, a splinter in your skin, something that's just irritating, just nagging at you, right? So naturally as a defense, what the oyster does is it secretes that substance called nacre, that same substance that it used to, um, to grow the shell, it secretes it over that substance. And eventually it secretes uh, an amount over time where it starts to enclose that object in. And over a period of years, over uh, producing that knacker over that substance, then that's when you get a pearl formed. So what I was reading is that the odds of finding a pearl in an oyster is somewhere around 1 in 12,000. So this is something that is a rare occurrence. So the odds are looking like they're stacked against you, whether it's naturally or even in aquaponics. Now, aquaponics, I would presume that it would be the odds would be, you know, even uh, more against you because, you know, we're not dealing with a lot of uh, uh, as many foreign objects as you would have somewhere in, in you know, like, like a beach setting where there's sand and all types of different um, organisms and stuff like that that are that are dwelling around the oyster. Right. So that's what I would uh, assume to be um, uh, to be the uh, situation if you try to grow them in an aquaponics uh, or a recirculating system. But once again, those aren't going to happen anyway, for the most part, because I mean, you could have fresh water. You can get you can get freshwater pearls so you can still get that. There's still a chance of hope. But, you know, the odds are stacked against you. So, I mean, you may be able to get it one day if you if you just luck up or if you keep growing and testing your luck. You may be able to get it. I'm not saying that you can't get it, but you know, it's not looking like it's something that's very, uh, that's likely, you know, so that's just my, that's my take on that. So with that being said, I hope that that has answered your questions that you have regarding oysters and clams grown in aquaponics. And hopefully that has edified some of you guys that are out there that maybe be, uh, you might be looking or thinking about the same, um, uh, type of uh, question that the, the person here has asked. So with that being said, any of you guys that have questions, you can feel free to submit them down in the comment section below, or you can uh, submit them through email at brooklyn at the school of and then I'll take a look at them and hopefully I'll be able to answer them, you know, and feature them here on the show. Also, if you guys need extra help with aquaponics, you could um, enroll in the free course by clicking on the link below. We also got paid courses at the school of that will help you out tremendously and get you going with aquaponics, help you learn the fundamentals and get you growing like an aquaponics guy. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>